Merry New Year! Happy New Year. In this country, we say Happy New Year. Welcome to Black Irish Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to an all-new Black Irish Podcast with myself, Brennan McCorkle, and Prison Mike Crawford. What's up, bro? <laughs> What's going on, man? How are you today? I'm good, dude. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Can't complain. Good. You're looking fly as shit today. Hey, let me ask you something. Did you ever know any girls named Ladesh? No. No? Because I probably would have made fun of them. Why? Because <laughs> that's a funny name. I don't know. I just always thought, People like... People make fun of me. Crawford, crawfish, I heard that all the Crawfish, but if, you're, if your girl was Ladesh, you'd be like, hey, I'm going to Bangladesh. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take you to think of that? That was good. Oh, not not very long at all. I literally heard the word Bangladesh, and I was like, ha Oh, I just don't like Do <laughs> <laughs> you know my name was supposed to be Oliver? I can know a couple people named Oliver. They're, they're all, I don't know. I got one Oliver that's pretty... But his not his real name, not Hollow. So there's that. That's his middle name. Your name was just no always switch. gonna be Mike, yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, mine. I guess there was an old switcheroo at the last point where it was. It went from Oliver to Brendan. But uh, yeah, it was supposed to be Oliver. And then my wife was supposed to be Althea. So instead of Dallas and Brendan, we were supposed to be Althea and Oliver. I like Dow Pal. Yeah, Dow Pal's way better. <laughs> Uh, and then we have, well, we have my son where I was like, look, I got to name him Mickey. Like that was my rule. I was like, listen, if we have a son, I'm naming him. His name's Mickey. And it's like, everybody yeah. asked me like, same thing for me. If I have a son, he's got to be a junior. So there you go. Yeah. That's you're a I'm Mike junior that. guy, but everybody's like, well, what'd you name him after? Who'd you, what? Mickey, Mickey Mouse. I'm like, I didn't name him after anything. Like I just like the name Mickey. Irish name, like, it's just a good name. I like it. Mickey McCorkle. Sounds right. Mickey McCorkle. You know? And you then know it was Mac like... Mac Jones' real name? Mac is his real name? No, his real name is McCorkle. <laughs> his real name is McCorkle Jones, bro. No, it's not. <laughs> I on everything I love. <laughs> no. <laughs> but then it would even be Mac, like McDonald's. Like, it's not the same. No, his name is McCorkle. But they, I don't know if he spells it the same, but his first name is McCork. It might yeah, it's be probably M-A-C. M-A-C something. Yeah, it's probably M-A-C. Now I don't want to Google it, but I, I bet you his middle name is Corkle, and you're just fucking it all up. Poor Mac. I'm not. His first name is McCorkle. Dude. All right, I got to dig into this. <laughs> I have an internet machine. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't know that already. That's I got to cool. I gotta find out on this. But I just told everybody that I named my son after the beer. Because I love Mickey's. the what? Uh, the beer. Because I'm like, listen, yeah, I name my that cheap beer. I used to love Mickey's. Oh, <laughs> tall cans of Mickey. So I had uh, I had a buddy at the when we lived in townhome in Chatsworth. Uh, we lived across down from a mobile station, and every day after work, I'd get off work at like one in the afternoon because I was there at four in the morning. So I'd be like, okay, I'd eat my, like my second lunch at home. Cause I'd eat my first lunch at like 10 AM. So I'd go home, get a tall can of Mickey's and I'd have like sriracha sauce on whatever I was eating, hot sauce, beer, and whatever I was eating. I would do this that. This should be made out of steel. It is pretty much. Cause then I actually, Patel was the guy's name, buddy Patel. And, uh, so I actually was like, Hey man. I know you're a small mobile station that only has like eight selections of beer, but I come here every day. Can you start carrying 40s for me? I hate, like they're cheaper. <laughs> they're just cheaper. It's two bucks for a 40 or a dollar 70 something for a tall can. I'm like, bro, hook a brother up. Don't make me buy two tall cans for four bucks. Give me the, oh, give me the juice. Grenade six packs, man. You have to like carry the little grenade. Yeah, the when it Mickey's was done, grenades. You could bomb it. Yeah. Did you guys <laughs> ever have Lucky Beer wherever you guys were? 
know. Lucky, lucky beer? beer. They used I'm, to I'm have. Really, I never really was a beer drinker. I, don't, I know Mickey's because of the drunks around my neighborhood. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. That, that is true. Usually Sorry. drunks are the ones it's, drinking Mickey's. But that was always. Was pretty cheap stuff. That's why I asked you that. That's why I, that was. I mean, because you know the people that you see outside that are drunk drinking it, you think it's the cheap stuff. They smoke the cheap cigarettes. They think they drink the cheap beer because they're just trying to get as much of it as possible. Yeah, so we did. I mean, the the big boys that we used then to then switched to Natty Light. Yeah, I'm well, we did. We did Colt Forty Fives, <laughs> Oldie, Miller High Life in the Thirty Twos, and then Mickey's. And if we were doing like Edward Forty Hands, did you ever play Edward Forty Hands? I don't even know what that is. All right, but so I it's can what assume you assume what it is. It's you hold two forties, yeah, and you get them duct taped to you, and you can't. Get them unduct taped until you finish the 40. It's a really stupid, childish game that we did in high school. Some people follow that into their 20s. Childish game. Yeah. So I did a beer bong once and almost threw up on everybody. <laughs> From one beer? From a beer? <laughs> yes, I can't chug a beer. Beer is absolutely this. Like, people who, no offense if you drink beer for a regular, on a, if you drink beer on a regular basis, your taste buds are like have to be ruined. Because if you think that stuff is good to come home and drink it every day, like you're just ruined. Your taste buds are just, I don't know, dilapidated or whatever, whatever the word is. Like, they're dead. They're gone. It's, they're no more. Because beer is absolutely disgusting. If you can drink beer for Not three true. days in a row, It's not true. It is an acquired taste. Now, I will say this. As a professional drunk, you have to power (laughs) through. What? You're you're a recovering drunk, man. No, no, no. I'm not. Listen, I'm not recovering. I've been recovered. I need to stay the fuck away from it for the rest of my life, most likely. (laughs) I can't. I don't want to consume it. I actually, I have confidence in myself. Someone who was addicted to something, do you think you were addicted to it? A hundred percent. Then you're always recovering, man. That's yes. hey, that's a philosophy. I love it. I, I'm not saying any which way you do it is wrong. But as somebody who has consumed a lot of most of the <laughs> alcohols in every way you can, I'm like an I'm I'm the one that got away. I'm the one that survived. I'm the dead man that tells the tales. You know, so I you I'm telling you, when you have to power through beer initially when you're a child, yeah, it sucks. But by the time that you're done and you're through high school and you're like, okay. Beer is kind of sucky, but it's not as bad after the first couple. Then when you actually look forward to the experience of that first beer, which, by the way, the first beer is the greatest beer of all time. You're always trying to chase the dragon after that one. That's why you keep going for it. But that first crisp, cold beer on a summer day or when you just get done with a job or something, there's nothing better. You want an ice cold something, and if it's ice cold, beer tastes delicious. I'm foaming at the mouth right now. Dude, Yeah, no, it's the bar. beer is not that bad. A cold, but you can't get a crappy beer. That's for sure. I will say I was no I, Heineken. I only drink like when I if I drink a beer, it's Heineken Corona. Like top, I need the see. Top but of here's the, top the thing: the you also are picking the beers that go the skunkiest, the easiest. Heineken yeah. and Corona are the two easiest skunky beers of all time. Yeah, once they're no longer <laughs> cold, they're trash. I know, and the, the, but the problem is, I always used to purchase my stuff at like liquor stores and Seven Eleven. So it's like, bro. You got, like, the stuff that was in the back, left on the truck for six weeks, and then they brought it back in, warmed it back up, cooled it back down, put it in the freezer, brought it back out. Gross. Gross. Oh. Anyway, you want to know what else is another gross name to, for your middle names? Lippincourt Ballinger. Like, what a fucking asshole would have those kind of middle names. I like, where do you find these names at? And McCorkle know. is his middle name, I think. Okay. And it's spelled the exact same way. All right. But why do they on the uh, the shows that I watch in the morning? They call him McCorkle as if it's his first name, but his first name is my name, and then he has your last it's name. It's Michael McCorkle, spelt like mine, <laughs> Jones. Now I'm really pissed that the Niners didn't draft him. Come on, guys! <laughs> what the hell? And this was a match made in name. heaven. So he's got my first name. Your last name is his middle name. He's a winner. And motherfucking and Jones, Jones is his last. You're gonna name. be a win. Hey, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so is this our new favorite player? But he's on the Patriots. It might be my new favorite player. Because Michael Jones would be my name. Literally. So my whole family after me is Joneses. Because my mom married my dickhead dad. (laughs) Disappeared. Which is why my brother's a third. My brother's named after my dad. And he's a Jones. If they would have married just a year earlier, I would be Michael Jones. So. We need to get a sit down with Mac Jones and find out uh, if maybe we're all three related somehow. 
There you go. That's what I'm talking about. I'm rooting for Mac Jones from now on. Shout out Mac Jones. I've all, I've been rooting for Mac Jones. He was on my fantasy team, but I like I do like that. You know, he came in and kind of just handled his business and just kind of was like, "Hey, is this guy gonna be good?" And then all of a sudden, it's like he kind of went under the radar, but Josh Allen trajectory. It was like this guy could be good, but you never know. But Josh Allen got pumped up so much, and Mac Jones. It was I lost a like, hundred dollars on Mac Jones because I definitely thought he was going number three. Oh, really? <laughs> Yes. No, no, no. I knew that shit wasn't going to happen. My poor. Man, it was going to happen up until the last week when they went to go see that last workout. I know. Gosh. I don't know know why he got to have a second workout, bro. Dude, I'm telling you. You know what it is? It's just, it's, it's when you're doing good, you try and parlay it. It's the emotional parlay of life. Man, he's the Danny, they're the Danny Angels of, they just did one too much, man. Yeah. No, I think like so, Danny too. Danny Ainge did one, two little moves. Danny Ainge played those draft. This is going into a whole other subject. So, I'll just... But Danny Ainge played his bad hand wrong with those draft picks. He should have had more talent on that team. <clears throat> I agree. Time, but he could have used that, those draft picks and parted them into a lot of people. Parlayed in, but he was asking for just a bit too much every time. And now the Celtics team. But now that's him over there. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry about my dog. He's going bananas. But you know who else, anyway, is going I bananas? Well, I hear my dog walking around. Though, oh, so my dog is just chirping in the back. Today. But my three-year-old has just, I mean, he's caught in a whole new level of stank in his life. I don't even, I don't know how to deal with this little dude. Like, he's, his school got shut down for COVID reasons, whatever. And my eight-year-old, <laughs> his school is shut down for winter break. So I got both the kiddos at home, you know, whatever. But my three-year-old, like, this dude, I understand why his teacher's like, he's a little tough to deal with. Because he is just, like, I'm in the bathroom peeing, and he comes in, and he's getting frustrated because it's taking too long. And I'm like, listen, dude, you don't have to be here. You're getting mad at me in the bathroom where I'm supposed to have privacy. You can leave. Get out he of my needs space. Your attention. He needs your attention, right? Oh, he Sorry. doesn't know. He needs my attention when he needs it. Because check this out. I was, I think it may have been the same day where they were eating lunch, PB&Js, green beans, you know, standard lunchy stuff. And I go to do something. I come back and Connor finds me and he goes, Daddy, I'm done. So I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> so I go and he has a empty plate and... A napkin in front of his place setting. So I um, go to throw it away in the recycle and I see a half a sandwich and like a quarter of a sandwich in the recycle. <laughs> I go, Mickey, did you throw your thing in the wrong? He's like, no, I ate my sandwich. I'm like, you know what? You're right. I saw you already ate like half of it by the time I walked out of the room. So little man <laughs> threw his stuff in the wrong. I only knew because he threw it in the wrong one and then pulled his brother's stuff and put it in front of his thing. It was like, hey, dad, come check out how awesome I am at eating like you little shit bag. So this is the three year old that I got to deal with. This guy is playing mind yeah. games with me, dude. <laughs> this kid is savage. Like he was, he was sitting at Yo, the table. You told these. St- I'm not gonna lie. There's this dude I follow on TikTok that tells similar stories, and he's like famous. If you had a TikTok, not to say you need another social media outlet, dude. and told stories like this, like you would probably be famous already. Uh, I got I'm plenty of time that. to work that stuff out. I don't, you know, I my my brother's send, old lady was trying to. Once we get off this show, though. Yeah, he was trying to explain. She was trying to explain to me about TikTok and stuff and how to do it. And I'm like, you know what? I just don't need that extra stuff right now. It's the number one social media platform in the world right now. I understand. Once we have Actually, a social media, somebody us. doing our shit for us, then TikTok. Maybe I'll create us one. Oh, go don't for put it. Shit on it. Go for it. I. I'll send you the information. Please do. Please do. So let me tell you what else this little shit bag does. Like the, the way he talks to adults, especially me and my wife. It's borderline, like, offensive. However, he is usually in the right with his emotions, so I can't get mad at him. Like, he was sitting at the table with my wife, the three-year-old. The three-year-old! Like, not Did you almost... promise this story by telling everybody that you have genius kids? You didn't tell everybody that first. Like, you have to premise all stories involving your kids by letting the world know that you have two baby geniuses at home. They okay, are pretty doggone smart. My wife and I test high. And our children do as well. But they also get the flair of mom and dad and our hilarity and sassiness. So 
he's like sitting at the table with my wife and she's trying to engage in something that he was already playing with. He's playing with the toy and she's like, oh, let's do it like this. And he's like, no, do it this way. And she's holding it. And she's like, no, let's do it like this. And he's like, no, do it this way. She's like, no, let's do it like this. So then he goes, give it back. She's like, no, let's play with it. And he's like, give it back. And she's like, Connor, I just want to play. He's like, what's your problem? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And I'm standing 10 feet away from them. And normally I would scold my kid, like, don't talk to your mom like that. But he's kind of okay, like, he's correct. So I just kind of walked away with my hands up, like, looks like you guys got to figure this out. <laughs> I am not doing <laughs> shit here. <laughs> I am out of this way here. Uh, Count dude, me out. I was talking to him another time, a different time. And we're saying something. I'm like, Connor, like, I need you to do this. I need you to wash your hands for me, dude. Like, you just went to the bathroom. You have to wash your hands. And he just looks me dead in the eye and goes, your life is going to be broken. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck kind of... That's the kind of shit you say before you murder somebody. <laughs> you don't say that to your father in the bathroom. This dude is a psychopath. That, that was his warning. That was his warning to you. Oh, dude. We, last one. We were in the room the other night, and I said, Connor, I really don't want you to be in trouble. And he said, then go away. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> God damn it. You're right, but stop it. <laughs> hey, yo, you're kind of in trouble, but you're genius. not. That one is a genius right there. Like, son of a you bitch. Don't wanna see, you don't want me to be in trouble, then don't watch me. <laughs> He's like, fucking go away, Dad. Down. You don't want to see this shit. Now, <laughs> Protect yourself, Father. Go away. I don't need you to be an accomplice to this. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty by association, Father. Oh, Damn, shit, man. That is too funny. He's all, dude, but this. Just this three-year-old's a champion. We had, like, he has all these allergy issues and shit. He's allergic to fucking whatever. So we got him tested for the cow's lactose or whatever. Turns out not allergic to that. But that was only one thing because they had, they only took three blood samples. But they had to take blood from three-year-olds. If I'm it's like, not lactose, then you might want to get gluten checked. Yeah, so we didn't want to be super invasive because they have to take blood. And I'm like, I don't want my son being pricked a thousand Sorry. times for this shit. Yeah, I know someone who did the allergy test and had to get 18, 18 pricks. They, they could do just... up to like 300 and something to test for yeah, individuals. Well, no, they do 21 so. at my job, man. That's crazy. Just to, to do yeah, but like, this dude uh, was a champion. He just like, I was like, okay, like trying to distract him. And he just looked, like watched the needle go in his arm. Just kind of was like, okay, cool. I was like, oh my God, dude. Shut up. Come on. Crazy. Man. Please don't be that cool with needles. <laughs> like, have a little fear of him, buddy. <laughs> nah, that means he's going to end up tat, tat, tatted up. Oh, I don't know crazy God, stuff, I hope man. not, man. Well, and then we had to get x-rays on his stomach, which we still haven't done because we've got to figure out. He's going to be a WWF star anyway, man. Uh, what? <laughs> he, doesn't, he wants to be Spider-Man. He doesn't want to be For anything. now, man, until he gets a little bit bigger and gets to fight his brother and they do wrestling moves on each other. <laughs> See, he's not a wrestler. He's more of a I want to actually punch you kind of a guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how he rolls, dude. <laughs> My say, Connor. Okay, well, we see Connor wants to be like Connor. Yeah, Got he's going to be more MMA than WWE for sure. That's what I'm talking about. But yeah, he's, he's sitting in there for the front row. I mean, we I tried to take him into x rays and get his stomach x rayed because. You know, we wanted to see what's going on in there. This fucking x-ray lady, like, ugh, bothered the shit out of me. We ended up not getting it done because he was kind of throwing a fit. He had to take his shirt off. Didn't want to do it. So I'm like, I'll take your my shirt off. Well, like, we'll do it together. Whatever we got to do, like, let's do it. And this whole, like, this lady's, like, interjecting as I'm talking to my three-year-old. She's like, oh, like, at first kind of helpful for 10 seconds. And then she's like, Oh, well, if he's not going to do it, then, you know, we can just get him out of here. We could do it another day. And then the next breath is like, okay, well, if you can just get him to lay down. And then she's like, I deal with kids all the time. I'm like, bitch, do you deal with adults? Because I'm the one that's dealing with this situation right now. You are the x-ray technician. Stand the fuck back until you're ready. Like, chill. You're, you're making it worse. So then finally I'm like, okay, you're the one that's upsetting my child now. So now I got to go. Fuck you guys. So then uh, we take off and it's like, all right. Let's go get a treat. So we go through the Mickey D's drive through which by the way, when did that become like the given child's treat is like, Hey guys, we're going to get a treat after we just did something gnarly. It's either ice cream or McDonald's. Why are those the two things? How did Mickey D's slide in there like that? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I did get myself a set of chicken nuggets, though. <laughs> Mickey D's always going to be in there, though. Yeah. I, I got myself a set of chicken nuggets, which, I don't know. It was good, because I hadn't had them in a really long time. Like, a decade. But it also kind of felt like hooking up with an ex-girlfriend. Like, temporarily satisfying, <laughs> but ultimately regretful. <laughs> hey. Oh, McDonald's is pretty still good, still pretty good, man. Don't don't sleep on McDonald's. Yeah, it's all right. I <laughs> I've been having now that we're on food. I've been having snack issues. Have you ever had this issue where you open the bag in the wrong part and there was like an open fold in the front? Like, what's with this new zippery front open package? Like, you don't open the top of a bag, you open the front where there's like a real sealable pouch. I don't, I don't know. know about that. It's all yeah. the fancy <laughs> snacks with like fucking sugar snap say. peas or some bullshit. But like, I didn't see that, so sugar I just ripped. Snap peas. I don't know. There's some something. Trust me, there's plenty of salt on them. But it's like it's an alternative to a potato chip. It has all the stuff that's on a potato chip. It's not just not a potato. But it's like I just ripped the corner of it, so now I got an open rip bag, and it has a resealable front. I don't know. They, but they put a little slash in there, like you know where you like pre tear it. It was already on the bag. I don't know. They Fuck set me. you up for failure, bro. That's what happened. <laughs> you know what I followed that up with? I ate some dog food. Kind of halfway <laughs> on purpose, halfway not on purpose. <laughs> so. So you had a heck of a weekend, I see. It's been a wild fucking week, dude. I was school out and eight and three year olds in the house. Your brain goes to mush a little bit, and there was so a bunch. How'd of... you? So how'd you eat dog food? And there's no accident to eating dog food. Listen, so no, no, no. no. I said I almost plate. listen. You're not listening. Listen, listen, listen. So no, here's listening. what happened. So I got so my boy Rocco gets you know some dry dog food kibble, and then we have little wet dog food and pouches that we single serving put in there easy peasy so in the process of that i warm up the water to loosen up he's old now so i gotta you know break down the kibble a little bit with some hot water and in the process of squeezing out the thing usually especially with feeding kids you know 17 meals a day i usually always lick whatever i'm eating or you know clean my fingers or something so i got the pouch There's like a little bit at the top, and I got the pouch like two inches away from my mouth. I was like, this is dog food. I was like, eh, fuck it. And I just wanted to try it. Not bad. Wasn't bad. It was the wet dog food. It wasn't kibble, which, by the way, I did eat as a child for money. You ever eat dog food? No. Come on. This is my first and only dog. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's true. So bad as that. But the inside of your body has to hate you. But you have a stomach of steel already because you used to drink Mickey soap. <laughs> Full circle. <laughs> Did you, you ever use anything, to... brother? Well, you could eat anything. <laughs> I don't know, man. There was a dollar, dude. Like, so you eat a handful of kibble as a kid, you get a dollar from an adult that lives on your street that's fucking an asshole. You know, I grew up in the projects. No one had dogs. We barely could afford the kids that were dead. That's we why a do- no That's dog. why we would eat kibble for a dollar because a dollar was rare in our parts as well. But that ice cream yeah, man. Who had kibble? Yeah, we had kibble. We did have yeah, kibble. There was no kibble around my house. I got you. But the ice cream. Well, did you have an ice cream there. dude that you would run out to? I know you're in the yeah, fucking projects, but there's still ice cream trucks. I did, but we ain't for no dog. All right. Nobody foot in that Dogs bed, are buddy. free. Food is expensive. They are not free. They are free. Dogs ain't no free. You can't go get a dog right now for free. You can't even go get a dog from the shelter. You can't even go save a dog for free, buddy. That's not true. Free. I mean, Absolutely well, yeah, true. that is true. It does cost to get <laughs> dogs out of a shelter. But I found Maggie. Didn't you find your dog? Or didn't you get your dog for free? You said you found Maggie. I found Maggie, my dog that I got in the car back in the day in Palmdale. I, I didn't told... know that was your dog's name back then, because that's my dog's name now. We had a conversation about this, Michael. Dang, I smoked too much. That's okay. But yeah, so that, I got that dog for free. Yeah, I got Maggie from like a uh, rescue, but it wasn't free, buddy. Oh, I thought it was I didn't realize it got dollars rescue. to rescue Maggie. <laughs> I don't think we listened to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, I, by the way, the ice cream man she's really worth it. was all, you know, also a drug dealer. So there's that. I was always wondering why the adults, I'm like, who needs $60 to go to the ice cream man? Like, fucking, everybody oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ice cream man yeah that everybody that knows what's up <laughs> <laughs> needs that money to go to the ice cream man. It was great for us, though, because anytime a particular neighbor was buying his nefarious items, he's like, whoever's on the street, come get what you want. He's like, I'm getting my gear. Here, I'll hook all these kids up, too. <laughs> it was also a ploy to be like, okay, now go eat them up the street while all the adults hang out. It's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a neighbor named Nacho that fucking would make me do little items for him and promise me a quarter. I swear to you, this guy owes me $7,000 in quarters. <laughs> I never got paid once by this motherfucker. We better not ever find you, Nacho. No, he's a sweetheart, but nacho, he would always nacho man. He'd be like, "Hey, go get me, you know, go get me a beer. I'll give you a quarter. Go get me this, I'll, you know, mow my lawn. I'll give you a dollar." His big thing was pick the corns off my feet. I'll give you mow a quarter. my lawn. I'll give you a dollar. You know how much we got paid to mow lawns around here, buddy? You didn't have a lot more than a dollar. Mowing lawns and shoveling snow. You well, think shoveling kids snow, came yeah. And try to shovel my, shovel my snow. How much I'm would you? Soul. How much would you make shoveling snow and mowing lawns? A couple hundred dollars if you were out there all day like we were. Oh, see, this is just the one guy. You're out there hustling. Oh no, we would go house to house shoveling. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You guys were hustling. Or mowing. I'm just yeah, talking man, about man. this guy who's sitting in his lawn chair in his driveway drinking and well, yelling out orders. It's worth more than a dollar to mow someone's lawn, but I it's agree. Not off. Which is why I'm I'm still waiting for my check. From this guy. He also had one of the greatest lines of all time because his son had an egregious overbite. So he just always said he had buck teeth and he could eat corn on the cob through a picket fence. <laughs> to his son, he would say that. That's fucked up. But it was funny. It's a good joke. <laughs> You're a dirty man for that. I know. All right. Well, now that we're bringing in the new year, we're 2022. What, uh, did you know that I had no idea what NYE meant? I didn't know that was New Year's Eve. I was just like, what the fuck is going on in New York this you weekend? You don't listen to me, you don't listen to the world. Who do you listen to? Who do Nobody. You listen to? I don't fucking listen to anybody. <laughs> Ask my wife. <laughs> She's about ready to kill me six times a day. <laughs> it's crazy, man. I may have listened to nobody. At least she's not alone. All right, what'd you do on alone. NYE? Nothing. Sleep every yeah. year. I don't pay. That's, I don't, that's not how I celebrate. Sorry. Me neither. This was the first time in a long time we stayed up to actual like midnight in our area. Oh, Usually it's like yeah. East Coast New Year, yeah. bitches. Bed at nine fifteen. Like this, basically, it's a new day, but you're changing the year, and you want me to be celebratory? I need this rest, buddy. Got things to do in the morning. Like to, when I wake up tomorrow, guess what? My life is still gonna be the same. It's not at all. Like, a holiday. like I don't know. To me, it's not really a holiday. See, now know. that you're saying it and we're talking through it, I kind of I agree with you in a sense that I'm like I'm not a New Year's resolution guy. I believe that if you want to make a change in your life, you should just fucking do it. I don't know. Uh, although I, you know the the New Year's thing resolution as far as. Uh, a timeline to set a goal or something like that. I get that. I, I got no problem with that. I'm not shitting on New Year's resolutions. I'm just saying, me personally, I don't, uh, you know, subscribe to that. I'm not theory. shitting on them either. The people who make them shit on them. You know what I mean? New Year's resolutions oh, fail every year, like 70% or some high-ass number. Oh, yeah. I'm not the one who's shitting on them. You all are shitting on them. <laughs> so yeah. Keep shitting on them. It's okay. But that being said, New Year, like the refreshing thing, kind of, again, I'm with you. I'm like, it's just, I got to remember to write a two instead of a one for a while. And by the time I remember that, it's going to change to a fucking three. three. That's, you know, yeah. <laughs> like that's, that's how my life works when it comes to I years. Barely start However, June. as somebody who loves to fucking party, if you look at it as we're bringing in this year with a fucking bang, which I think is the way it's supposed to be intended. Although I have no idea is like, okay, you know, uh, Let's fucking bring in this new year hard and fast. We'll bring it in going, dude, we started this year off awesome. Let's just continue this run without being a fucking maniac like you are on the first day of the year. Which, by the way, why is that? It should be the, like, I don't know. Everybody's hungover 
and fucking still <laughs> drugged up from New Year's Eve on New Year's Day. New Year's resolutions should be like, like January 8th should be the official New Year's resolution day. Like you got a week to get your shit together, people. Because <laughs> God knows that you failed your first time. I don't know. What? So what yeah. was your, what was like your wildest New Year's Eve? Do you even have one? I know back in the day you used to party a little bit. Yeah, I would get or drink, most fun or drinking shit, but like there's no extra wild. Man, I'm, I mean, when I was younger, you know, we would drink, smoke, you know, the same old bullshit. But just the same old house party, just amped up a little yeah, bit, nothing but... crazy. No, no. Yeah, I don't think that. Funny enough, is like, I never, I never celebrated any holidays when I was on my own. Like, if I was kind of out and about in the world without anybody else or attached to anybody. Like, I just didn't celebrate holidays. It wasn't a thing for me. So when I got to be with my now wife, her parents have a New Year's Day party every year, which is a big event. You know, starts about Rose Bowl time and goes until fucking God knows when. You know, used to be till the next day. But we were always crashing early on New Year's Eve because we are like, we got shit to do. Tomorrow's the party. Fuck today. Today's the last day of fuck this year. Tomorrow's the first day of fucking let's rage. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> there you go, man. Like, yeah. All right. I'm, I'm cool with that. If you think, oh, yeah, this, this is the first day of your new year, let's enjoy it because we know what life really is. So I'm okay with that, but I just don't. But Let me ask you this. Are you cool with Ken Rosenthal being fired because of his criticism of the... Major League Baseball Commissioner, Rob Manfred. I don't know what he really said. Just, I don't even really remember what he said, but it was basically along the lines of, like, this guy is just ruining the game because he can't make up his mind and stick to hard, fast rules, and I don't know. It's just he criticized him for doing a shitty job, which he's been doing for a long time. No one should be fired. If he didn't cross any lines for racial or sex. But what if you're just not good at your job? Who? Ken Rosenthal? No, Rob Manfred. Ken Ro- yeah, he's Rosenthal is amazing at his job. He's good at his job. That's what he does. Like He's a sports analyst, commentator person. Yeah. He's allowed to criticize you for not being good at your job. Apparently not because he the got The players canned. who are not good players, they criticize them also, right? Yeah. That's but apparently job. Rosenthal got canned for this. Which is just like... it was personal. Manfred took it personal, so he yeah. called someone in Fox and was like, yeah... <laughs> Don't worry, he got a good severance package. People well, it's just one of them. those things where it's like, even when your own people are turning on you, they've had enough of it. It's been going on for too long. It's just shit. Like, God. the commissioners no in Somebody sports is, give a job. is the most ridiculous. It's, it's better than being the fucking president. President's got a lot of hard shit to deal with. These guys doesn't make do whatever the fuck they want. They get paid the most in the world. Like, exactly. these guys skate on Easy Street all day, and half of them aren't good at their jobs. They just started finally fucking replacing people. Like, Adam Silver's doing a good job, in my opinion. He's done a good job. You know, they're, it was kind of easy to step Adam up. Silver has the easiest job, too, though. He does. Well, then it's a good thing he's I mean, doing good at it. 90% of the people are the same color, so they usually agree with one another. You listen to them, you do fall in line for the most part, make a couple hard stances for the other people on the other side, and- yeah, you know, but when was the last time the NBA had a commissioner that did that? David Stern was pretty uh, okay. He wasn't, he wasn't horrible. Like, he wasn't not, horrible. That's, not, that's, that's okay, Mike. <clears throat> do you understand? We're talking about somebody who's in charge of one of the biggest, most successful company, corporation, businesses, sports in the entire world, and you're saying successful. <clears throat> and you're saying, well, he wasn't horrible. That's not the person I want running my organization. I want somebody that's so who awesome. Do you think- Brought the NBA from what it was to what it is now. You, who was the commissioner doing that era? Stern did. I'm not saying. Listen. Okay. Listen. I'm saying I want better, and I think Adam Silver is doing than a- what the NBA is now compared to what it was. I don't know how much better you're gonna get, buddy. He brought them out of ten day, ten second video delays to the second biggest sport in the world. I don't think you get much better than that, buddy. Mm, yes. You get better when you deal with your players better. He dealt with his players just fine. 
So you Everybody you prefer Stern. Stern over Silver? Yes. Really? No, no, no. I'm not gonna say I prefer Stern over Silver. I won't say. Okay. That. I'm not. I'm not upset if Stern is still the commissioner. Though. There's no reason to be upset with David Stern as the commissioner. Isn't he especially dead? Especially for someone who's in the NFC. Yeah, he is in NFL. Well, I mean, he he is deceased. Well, okay. Well, then he would be a terrible commissioner. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> All mm-hmm. right. Well, let's go on to other politically sports charged news. What about Djokovic? So, <clears throat> as of this recording, just found out that so Djokovic was exempt from the vaccination needed to still be, can play in the Australian need Open. to play in the Aussie <laughs> Open. So no, he can't. <clears throat> he can't play in the Aussie Open. Australia banned him. They did not allow well, him that's in what, Australia. Well, that's what just happened as of not too long ago before this recording was there's so much shit on social media about Djokovic getting special treatment. Now, granted, there were five people total that qualified for this exemption. <clears throat> However, the other, or I'm sorry, there's five others. The other five, all their information was kept private. Nobody knows which athletes they are. All this shit. So, the fact that Djokovic is is being put in the public spotlight for this, shame on the media for that. Or shame on the Aussie Open fucking whoever. Shame on Djokovic for trying to pull some fucking whatever he's trying to pull. Like, you can't just play in the tournaments if if you're not willing to. Part Why of the, is he pulling something? What because, he Mike, hang on. Excluded. The pro- there are reasons to be exempt from this vaccine. Yes, there are reasons to be exempt. However, Djokovic is the only one refusing to prove his exemption. He's saying, I don't have to prove shit to you. While the other five that are unnamed went through the entire process of it. So, so in this just whole, to play devil's advocate, right? Please do. How did his name get out and the other five people didn't? So that's, somebody wanted Djokovic's name in the... Because he wouldn't have I'm to saying. prove shit to anybody if someone didn't spill his name. I'm saying that I think it was the Aussie Open media leaked the, that it was Djokovic was one of them. Or if you know why? Because they wanted the dog to win again. That's I, what it is. Dude, oh, is so, money, bro. so after all this social media flare-up, as of the 5th, Australia has... While Djokovic is sitting at an airport terminal in Melbourne, he gets handed some papers saying that his visa has been denied. So they're, they went ar- the long way around to fix their mistake in the first place by letting him come and go, oh, now your visa's no good. So now he's sitting in an airport in Melbourne, Australia, <laughs> trying to figure his shit out and still play, not be deported. Like, all this craziness is going on. So I'm interested to see what shakes out and what what media, uh, media leaks come out and see what exactly... Like, I'm going to follow this story and find out exactly, like, okay, who did what, when... And why is this a thing? It shouldn't be a thing. It should it should be either he can play or he can't. He can come into the country or he can't. Like, there shouldn't be he's there and now he's detained because that part's fucked up. Yeah. I don't know. I will say, though, saying you're exempt from the vaccination and then not proving it is like having a service dog that's a chihuahua. He's not proving it to us. He proved it to somebody to get an exemption. Somebody <laughs> thought he was exempt. So whatever he provided to them, they believe it's enough to be exempt. But Why that's, does he have to tell you? No, no, no. He doesn't have to tell me. That's the part that I, from what I've read, from what I understand, he's refusing to, he's saying that's his private, personal matters. He doesn't have to reveal he that is. to whoever. He literally has to provide it to a doctor. I know. To sign off on an exemption. That's it. That's all. That is what HIPAA gives you. That's the privacy of HIPAA. That is the privacy of those I things to provide you those privacies. I know that. This and is the, bull. That I, is I know. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The fact that this whole thing is public is bananas. It's but just this crazy. This isn't America. Because if it was America, he'd be fine. I know, but that's what I'm saying. Is place Australia is a different country. It's a different continent. Yeah, I don't know that. It's rule. got I don't know all their HIPAA, own rules. HIPAA laws. They got kangaroos so and know. bars down there, man. Shit's wild. They do. So I don't know if they have HIPAA laws, so I can't speak to what's going on down there. But yeah, and here... He would not have to provide anybody but him and the doctor. Tell the doctor if the doctor is suffice, which is a legit doctor, a stand-up doctor, and they think you don't deserve to get the shot for whatever reason. 
dog, there are simple reasons. You can just pull up and show that you're allergic to something that's in the shot and it exempts you. It could be religious. And it can be religious reasons, but you can show up and say you can't have latex. I know, but you're the religious thing is something you don't have to prove. The religious what thing you is mean? you just say it's against my religion. That's all you got to say. Now, that would be lying for some people, but it would be the least invasive way. But Which, by the way, do you have to be for a vaccination to be against your religion. I don't know. Can we agree, See? besides <laughs> your favorite religion, that Greek mythology is the best, is the most fun? I'm not that too deep, but it sounds when you read it. It's Dude, cool. it's the best. Like if they made all religions like that. Now I've read but the it's Bible. Mythology, so it's mostly I know I've read the Bible that. too, and it's got some pretty cool stories in there. But it you does. know, there's a lot of diatribe in there too. That you gotta kind of <sighs> grind through them. Like I've heard this already. Stuff. Go, go, go. Get yeah, to the monsters. It but it's a lot, man. It's a lot going on in this world. All right, so let me ask you something. Moving on to football. Was Ward's catch the best catch ever in the Cowboys game? The one where he caught it against the defender, the back of his helmet, mm. rolled it, oh, yeah. fucking tucked it. Like it was a good catch. But it should have been an interception. You're a defensive back. Turn around and play the damn ball. This we're not fucking go guy can't give a, just... a wide receiver kudos for five seconds because it was against the Cowboys. He's not, I don't even know what his position is, but it was a nice catch. I give him that. But it wasn't the great. The greatest catch ever is the like Oklahoma defensive back catch from like last year when he just like jumped in the air, and like whatever the hell he did. That's literally the greatest catch ever. Have you never seen it? Google. <laughs> Oklahoma I'm, interception 2020. I'm going to have to amazing. revisit that because I do remember that was a sick play, but I don't remember what it looked like. So you're saying that's the best catch you've ever seen? In my life. In what? All right. All right. I'm going to have to look it up. You might have to share it with the universe. Okay. I thought it was a pretty rad catch because <laughs> of the fact that you could tell he couldn't see the ball, but he was... In his, you could tell he was trying to pin it up against something and hold on to it for dear life. So the fact that he was that conscious and just kept holding the ball up against something, that was pretty impressive to me. Because that was concentration, even though he couldn't see the ball. I see catches every week in the NFL that they have me doing that. Don't be like, yo, how did you catch that? Yeah, there's a lot of them that are like mind blowing. That you're like, oh shit, that one. The concentration factor just, I was like. Gosh, damn, this dude was really intent on hanging on to this ball. One-handed, too. One-handed. Very nice. All right, so I know, listen up. I know that everybody's saying Russ is going to the Giants. Mm -hmm. But don't you think that Baker makes way more sense there? Baker? Yes. Baker's, I mean, Baker's not much better than Daniel Jones. Baker's not good. I agree. Yeah, I mean, if they want to win, they, they need somebody good. Russ is. See, but with Russ, they're at the tail end. With Baker, they could build around him. You can't build around someone who's not good. He's not good. How Brendan. much longer is Russ going to be good? Russ is going to be, if you put a team around Russ, Russ is going to be great. But if he goes to the Giants, he's not going to have a team around him for three years. They have weapons. They have Saquon. They got Saquon Gallagher. and his they spaghetti knee? Evans. No. They got uh, the tight end Evans, and then they got Ooh, they got Galladay, Tony out of Florida. Fuck. They also have nobody that can block a Swiss cheese sandwich. And they have two first round picks. They get the center from Iowa, a right guard. If they get lucky, Evan Neal falls in. They get Evan Neal, the center from Iowa. They move Andrew Thomas to the right hand side. You got three parts of a pretty good line. Get you, you need some guards though, which is hard to come by. Guard is like the toughest position to find in the world. And we happen to have them all pro at one and then the worst at the other. How about that? This isn't about the Cowboys. Anyway. No, tell me who's the best and who's the worst. Zach Martin's the best. Yeah. And the guy from Texas is the absolute worst. He leads the league. My man <laughs> missed three games and still leads the league in penalties. <laughs> we subbed you out because we thought, oh, they were picking on you, so on and so forth. No. And they weren't picking on you. You, you just, just suck <laughs> all the time. And then this Sunday, two biggest plays. Of, no, we had three big plays called back by hole. One by Tyron, which I don't think was a hole. The other two, guess who? Connor Stink-Ass Williams. Sorry, his name is Connor, too. I 
I have to apologize. Your son is a way better version. <laughs> this guy, this guy stinks. And he made it to the NFL, so I'm going to give him credit for making it. But, boy, you play. How'd you hold up at left tackle in Texas? How? He needs to just send a card to his mom saying, hey, look, my made it. And just fucking. That's why we that's drafted it. him because we figured he would play right tackle for us. Then we got Lyle late in that draft, so we figured, oh well, we already picked him high. We'll push him inside. He'll at least be decent. He stinks. He gets about three holding <laughs> calls a game. Oh, hey, yo, Connor Williams stinks. And then I thought McGovern was going to be better, but for some reason he can't run block. Maybe he can maybe your boy just has Velcro well. hands. And he no, just he doesn't have Velcro himself. hands. He's just tiny. They need to put him at center. But Beatus can't play guard because he's tiny, and centers get like a little leeway. So maybe you don't have to move him anywhere. Maybe he just becomes a backup. Sorry, no, he's going to become a backup. Connor McGovern would have took if if we were able to run the ball, which I don't fully blame Connor McGovern for. But in those three games that we replaced him, if Connor McGovern was able to show that we can run the ball, I think he would still be in. I think they put him back out because we still were not able to run the ball. But that's no one's fault but the mother. Who's calling the plays? He doesn't run the ball enough. He will not run the ball two times in a row. If you ever watch a Cowboys game, for me, you, or anybody who's listening to us, he never runs the ball two times in a row. Never. I don't care if we gain 40 yards or three yards. He won't run it two times in a row. And I get it. That gets paid $75 million, so you want to make him earn the money. To hell with that. This is about winning football games. You can worry about that $75 million later. I don't care about it. I'm a Cowboys fan, and I want to win football games. Yeah, I also think that, you know, that's more of a just kind of a run and gun type. That's what they want to be. They want to be a run and gun. And it's like, he wants to be, but, but why? It's not, but why? It's not the best. <laughs> Dak is 27 and 0 when we rush for 100 yards. I don't care what you talk about. That Those are the stats that matter. Wins and losses 27 and 0, 100 yards. 23 and 1 when we run the ball more than we pass. You know what you need to do? Run the ball. I don't care. Like, bro, how can you know those stats and then go out there every week and do the bullshit that you do? Like, you don't want to see us win. You want to try to make your resume look good so you can get a head coaching job. They're going to hire you anyway, Keller Moore. Your name is well-respected now in the league. You're going to get your job. Relax. Run that. I mean, run Zeke, run Pollard, and run our way to a Super Bowl, buddy. That's what I need you to do. Dude, yeah. The more rest my defense gets, the better they'll play. This oh, dude, trust me, that was – I, I caught most of it, but that was the most, like, frustrating thing in the Notre Dame game. It was like they came out and they were only passing, and it was like, yeah, they're ka-chunk, ka-chunk, they're doing great. But then you become one-dimensional, and it works in the beginning, but when you need a tired defense in the third and fourth quarter, guess what? They're fresh as fuck. Fresh, yeah. That's why you can't be one-dimensional, not because passing isn't awesome. It's because you need – to wear down a team. If their defense is as fresh as your offense, you are going athlete to athlete in every single one. And guess what? Your offensive line is fucking tired from pass blocking every single time. Not just doing these, you know, two yard, you know, position your your D lineman, you know, get them where you need to be, like, and then you're good. This is five, six if you're lucky. Like they're they're playing hard for a, a significant amount of time. And it's the yeah, same O line. They're not swapping that. those guys out like the D line, and you know it's like, come <laughs> on, guys. And then you wonder why you kind of give up Okie State, their biggest fucking game in the history of their school. Says fucking dickhead. I stopped Not watching. Me. I thought I definitely thought that game was over. <laughs> oh, it was over. It was ugly. <clears throat> Did you? All right. Thirty I, unanswered though. Like, how, it is garbage. Know, garbage. And you're gonna well, don't hang your head on that defense. 18 to 23 year old kids, they take their foot off the gas, and it's a game they probably already didn't want to be at because they sh- feel like they should have been in the Natty Championship run. Obviously, I no. Think. Obviously, no. They would have got destroyed, just like Michigan and. They would have looked better than Michigan, and definitely Cincinnati. Maybe, I don't know. We'll but never know. Got the best player in the draft, so you would have looked better. That's my guy now. I think he's the, literally the number one prospect in this year's draft. Kyle Hamilton? Absolutely. He's the man, dude. He's the shit. He is the man. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to that. I didn't know. Did you see Greedy Williams on Monday Night Football? Who names our kid Greedy? He's okay. 
I mean, it's okay. But if that kid isn't good at something, that's a huge misstep as a parent. (laughs) He's already made it to the NFL. He's a starting cornerback. Ain't no misstepping from that. No, I know. But what if he, what if he wasn't? What if he could never he make it as a manager at Walgreens? I think he has another name he could have go by if he wasn't good at sports. I don't know. I think his real name is like, I don't know. I'm not I will that. say that, dude. I will say that. Black people have supreme confidence when naming their children. They're like, no, this is the fucking name. And you're like, okay. And it always seems to work out. Yo, it's a it's a dude for the Saints. His name is Lil Jordan. L I L Jordan. Yeah. This is real first. Yeah, name. I know. <laughs> Lil Jordan. It's crazy. He better made it. <laughs> he gotta write L I L apostrophe Jordan on everything that he signed. I caught Shut up, that. Man. I caught that a few weeks ago. I was like, whoa, okay. No, and that I remember the first time I heard about him. He was in high school. He was getting recruited. You know, I'd be into that type yeah. of stuff. And I read it, and I read it again. Like, bro, is that like? Hold on, let me look again. There's no something in front of the. His real name is L I L Jordan, with the apostrophe. With after the apostrophe, the yeah. It's, like his he has, has to be grammar in his front some name. of the best dope that they ever put on this planet to actually write that on the birth certificate. I'm just gonna say that. No disrespect to mom, because your son made the NFL, and. Y'all made it. Y'all good. If he keep making plays, he's going to make millions of dollars. Respect it. Get it. Mom, there's no way you were sober when you put that on the birth certificate. Like, we're not even going to act like you were sober, man. Sorry. Love you to death. But yeah, what, if that's the new, what if that's the new version of Junior? <laughs> you just name your boy Lil Mike. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and stick with the old version of Junior. I'm going to say he got it from my generation. And then you could be this- Lil Lil Mike. For his kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Crazy. shit. All right, so Big Ben fucking called it a day at Heinz Field. And how did he call it a day already in there, like, possibly going to make the playoff? Like, that's how much he doesn't this. give a fuck. Well, that's how much he just is ready to be gone because I think the team is tired of him. Honestly, oh, oh, 100%. The young because players are just, like, done with him. They're like, yeah, we we done with Ben and his bull. Yeah, the young players are like, listen, dude, you haven't been that good for a decade. Don't fucking talk to me like that. Yeah, you're bro, not, like, we you're like in the routes and get wide open, and you can't even get the ball to us. Like, bro, we don't want to hit nothing from you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. But who you, I mean, now it's going to be hectic because if they make the playoffs, then they're not going to be – but the quarterback there in the draft this year aren't expecting to go very high, so they might still get one of the top guys, even though it's going to be like 16, 17 in the draft. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be – That I mean, their best bet would just be to bring somebody in. They should bring in Deshaun yeah, Watson, one rapist for another. <laughs> 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 and then Big Ben can go to the Houston Texans. It's all good. Everybody can just wash their hands of it and go, no, no, ben is not, okay. For everybody that thinks Ben is retiring, they're highly mistaken. No. Ben is definitely not walking no, out no, of no, retirement. No. He's going to find him some borderline fake think they're going the way to the Super Bowl team to pick him up. And he's going to be a star quarterback Listen, next year in this league. Here's, here's what I would I, – if I was Ben, here's what I would do. Or if I was giving him advice, Ben, listen up, buddy. Take the first – while everybody's doing OTAs and all that bullshit, you're fine. You're doing nothing. As soon as the preseason starts, you start getting into game shape. That way, when week six to nine rolls around, and there's a devastating injury to Carson Wentz, you can go to the Colts and ride that train. You stay in the Midwest. He will get hurt. He's not good. You take over the team midseason, you ride them into the playoffs, and if you feel like it, you do it one more time. But you don't start the season with any team. You do not start the season with the team. I think you should go to uh I think you should go replace uh Russell. They don't want to throw the ball anyway. That's you true. You gotta make he gotta make a couple big throws again. You got receivers to make the big throws too. You have weapons. You got DK. You got the little guy. You got a nice Everett. Is a pretty fast tight end. The offensive line has been revamped. That's actually kind so, of brilliant because between his big receiver DK, where he can throw it up as he 
usually does. He and does. Ty Lockett with his little <laughs> speedster. When he's open, he's open. He's all the way open. He can he miss throw it by it. three yards, and Ty Lockett will go get it. He's used to go doing that because Russ is throwing off a of one foot all the time anyway. Exactly. I mean, that's that's not a bad fit. And not they want to run the ball a thousand times a game anyway. So he really ain't going to have to throw that often. And it rains up there, but is it really cold in the North? That's like, how do you think Russ would do with Tomlin in Pittsburgh? No, they don't. Russ, Tomlin doesn't want Russ. I don't. You don't think so? You don't think he would take a better Hall of Famer? No, they want to. No, because they like big offensive of linemen. Like it's. Oh, that's he's true. Got a, he's got, got a Z over him. Like they got like <laughs> seven, six, six, eight dudes on yeah. the line and stuff. Like Russ is kind of like they like them a big, stout, strong arm quarterback. I think they're going to go out to Kenny Pickett though. All right, just for fun, last landing spot for Russell Wilson, Carolina. I'm not mad at that. Him and McCaffrey. They got weapons. They, got weapons. they have Seattle-type weapons. They have, like, not great. I like all their weapons, actually. I like I like, I like McCaffrey. I like, um, I can't think of his name, number two, He's he, uh, DJ Moore. I yeah. like, I've always liked Robbie Anderson. Um, I don't. I'm a fan of the weapons. I'm a fan. Yeah, he has good. I don't know not... who plays tight end for them though. They would need a tight end. Yeah. But... Speaking of which, dude. Oh, Greg Olson. And their defense should be awesome next year. <laughs> By the way, Greg Olson on his broadcasting looks like a... he's the best. Bro... He took over. No, he looked... He's the best broadcast. Okay, he looks like a Cabbage Patch doll that grew up. Like Forget he needs to cut his looks. fucking hair, bro. Okay, I, I won't <laughs> argue with that. But as far as him broadcasting the game, he's, he's amazing. He's awesome. He's awesome. He's awesome. Yeah, I agree with that. I just can't look I at I hate him. Romo now. Sorry to say, I hate Romo calling Cowboys game because he always wants to talk shit about Dak because he was Dak's, brought Dak in, so I know he feels the type of way about Dak. And all he wants to talk about is what Dak can't do yeah. on the fucking football field. I hate when he calls our game. Troy used to be the same way, but he's come around because he's a Dak fan now. Well, because here's what it is. It's that cowboy quarterback ego. So he shit on Romo, and then as soon as Romo was out of the zeitgeist, the cowboys thing, then he's cool with Dak. So as soon as Dak's out of there, Romo will be cool with whoever the next cowboys quarterback is. And when Dak goes to do his Booger McFarlane replacement role, because Booger sucks, <laughs> I love Booger as a player, but oh my God. He's no, they took Booger to off. To. Booger sucked. That whole Monday Night Crew sucked. That's why they're all gone. No, I know, but, but Booger's, Booger's, Booger's still on the broadcast and the in studio now. Oh. So they need to, re- then when Dak retires, they replace him, <laughs> and then he can shit on whoever their replacement is. It's a whole Cowboys And it's cycle. like, when you guys Aikman are all assholes. was doing it, it's fine. Because Aikman accomplished things. He wants everybody to live up to his standard as a Cowboys quarterback. Romo, you ain't accomplished shit. Which you won one playoff game. Yeah. Dak did that already, bro. Like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the first. So the first year when Dak was a rookie. No, was it the second year? Dez is last year when we made the playoff run with Dez. Yeah. Man, I remember the time Romo c- called our game, and all he was talking about was how. Dak is not throwing it the right way to Dak. Like, you got to throw it up and give him a chance. I will, he's like a second-year quarterback. We don't just throw shit up and give people a chance because <laughs> interceptions happen that way, bro. Like, we can't risk that. We haven't made it yet. Like, we don't make those same throws that we do today then. But, damn, bro, like, I hate when he calls our games. I'm glad that the NFC is on Fox. You know what I'm glad? I'm glad that Sean McVay and the Rams are a running football team. That's what I'm happy about. You know what else I'm happy about is Matty Stafford eclipsing 4,500 yards. He's actually at 46.48. He cleared it by 148 yards. If I would have took the 5,000, he would be dead. First of all, he's only 352 yards away from that, which... He won't see anywhere near 350 yards again in the rest of this season. Sorry to say. He's only got two games left. He's only got one game left. No, he got two because he got the first round of the playoffs because he locked that up already. And we're going to – whoever they Oh, play, no, no, I'm saying regular play. season. Regular season. Oh, no, no, I'm just talking in general. See, regular season, he's got 352 to get to 5K. I don't think he's going to get there either. However, he's got 243 yards to get to five or 50,000 for his career. I do think that he's going for that number in week 18. He, he is. He's probably going for 50,000 so, shit. But – 
That also being said, with I didn't need the extra game like you said I would. I would have accomplished. Matty Stafford got his numbers in 16 weeks. Didn't need the 17th. So you can suck a butt on that one. You're right. No, I and if somehow he gets to 5K because he goes for this record and just throws bombs all day, I don't know. You should have to eat a pair of Crocs. He's definitely going to get the. He's definitely going to try to throw, but he's not getting a 5K. And in the playoffs, they're going to stink. So let me, let me ask just you. say that. So let me be the first to say that because this is what's going to happen in the playoffs, which doesn't happen in every regular season game. So let me get people a little insight. In the playoffs, people usually aim to take away your best talent. If anybody watches the Rams, they can see Cooper Cup really doesn't run fucking routes, bro. No. Like he's the most simple wide receiver ever because he just goes. He'll walk out to a route and just stop, and then. And be like, and then get open all of a sudden. He's he's a slot Darren like- Sproles. He's a, a slot Darren Sproles. He goes to a spot. He just stands. Dude, I watched six plays the other day where Cooper <laughs> Cup like pretends like he's gonna block and then just goes out by the line of scrimmage and stands there. That way, if there's no play and it's Nobody dead, open. he just he goes just fucking <laughs> punt return, buddy. Go. That's all they fucking do. That's all they do. Hey, yo. Hey, yo, it is the craziest shit in the world. It fucking like, works, though, because break. they don't spy him. They're like, oh, we got to stay a few yards off because we got to... No. There's just what's like... But what's going to happen is he's going to have an automatic someone's following him and a double team. And it's going to be hell for Stafford. Go find Odell Beckham Jr., baby. Go live with that. So, I don't know exactly how it has to happen, but there's a way that the Cowboys and Niners would play in the first round, yeah? Yeah, if y'all sneak in and we and somehow the Bucks well we're in, in three way tie, but we're not in second anymore. So you all can't get to six. I don't think. Got it. That's what I was curious about. Yeah, it would have to be two seven because you all aren't in the playoffs right now, right? You yeah. have to get in. No, I think we got in with somebody. Oh, you're in the six C right now. Where well, if you're in the six, I think that's us. I think that's what I'm saying. That's us right now. I definitely am not making in the a bet on that right now. Yeah. Y'all are not in the playoffs right now, are you? I think you? so. I think we are. I'm going to have to look Then you will have to... How? What do you mean? Cardinals? Oh, there's yeah, going to be three. Seed. So Cardinals, yeah, Eagles, seeds. you're the seventh seed. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Broseph. So, yeah, you can't play us at the seventh seed unless something changes. Gotcha. Unless the playoff situation changed because we fell off the two. We were in the two. Yeah. We lost. So we fell to the two and Bucks on the tiebreaker versus us. So it happened to be a three way tie. Gotcha. And so that we require. Trust me, I don't want to see the Cowboys in the first round. Shit. I, I did, that was the matchup I want to avoid because you all are going to run the ball. And for some reason, we can't stop the run. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's our problem. We have a problem with the run this year. Um, I don't know who. We're probably going to get. Hmm, we might get the Eagles back to back weeks, which would be fun. That would be hmm. wild. Speaking of the Eagles, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and take this time to celebrate myself as the fantasy football champion. I went ahead and took everybody down. And by the way, Mike, I won my championship game with Jalen Hurts and Taysom Hill as my quarterbacks. Like you said, could not be done. I did it just to (laughs) shove it right up your butt. (laughs) Handily, handily won. It wasn't even close. Well, because, Taysom, because Taysom stinks. But Jerry Hurts is the guy who cost me my fantasy league, so I'm going to give him a little bit of fantasy respect. By the way. I went to sleep on that game thinking it was in the bag, and I woke up and this fool had 37 points in my fantasy league versus the Redskins that Monday night. How? Two rushing touchdowns? You let this bum just run all over you and do you all dirty? I thought y'all had a good defense. Dude. Because the next week I scored 232 points in that league. So that person would have got whitewashed. But you didn't play him that week. Too bad. (laughs) And I did not win my other league. I ended up not winning. But I did get a severance package because I scored the most points in the regular season, which means I had the best team. So I just got unlucky in the playoffs, but that's how it works. So, fantasy football champion of the world. Which, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and put it out there. Fucking anybody that wants to play in a fantasy football league for money, fucking come at it. Because there's one thing. Mike, I love you. You are a wealth of sports knowledge. You're not that good at fantasy football, bro. I've come to that conclusion. 
You know so <laughs> much because fantasy football is different than sports. It's Come different. On, it just depends. It depends on the fantasy league because I'm always in it in my other fantasy leagues. Your league is different. Yeah, and I harder. haven't gotten used to it yet. How many years have you been so in it? So many motherfuckers. So people just be picking up people and like, bro, I need some flex. I need some some of that shit. Like it's wide receivers, running backs, no flex, and you need three and four. Like that's a lot of people to have to have when you're and the tight end. So yes. And so you got to get lucky and stay healthy. And listen, I'm a Cowboys fan, so there's that. Listen, you can you can harp on me for the rules of the league or the settings of the league, no, but no, they've no, been the. I, it's, it's different, so it keeps. You I understand, but it's. I respect that. It's. Uh, but it is different to what normal leagues look like. True, true. However, you're at the bottom <laughs> of the barrel usually, bro. But you always know. Yeah. The problem is you base your fantasy football stuff sometimes off of people's potential or because you like, like Tony Pollard, you're like, Tony Pollard, baby, going to start him all the time. It's like, okay, he's not the starting running back on the team, man. Don't talk about yeah, him but it's like not he's like getting have, like, 25 touches a game. Everybody has to have three running backs. It's not like I have a lot of options when I go a different route. So, Bro, I about, had Najee Harris, guys, Joe Mixon. And it's about my other guys showing up. Like when you have Dak and Russ, you need them to show up every week. Yes. If Russ misses five games, okay, it costs you. And so that's just fantasy, bro. It is. Russ hasn't missed a game in I don't know how many years I draft him. He misses five. His life, you know, I deal with it. You also drafted Dak. He didn't go down. Yeah, and he missed two games too. Two. I told you he was going to miss some time. But that two games, that's like as good as you could hope for Especially in a longer season. Come on, bro. Your quarterbacks who didn't miss any. What are you talking about? I don't know. Whatever. All right. Well, shit. I know you ain't watching anything, but did you happen to <laughs> catch anything besides football? Did you ever catch Swan Song? No, I haven't started that yet, but I am. And I saw you got you be watching Always Sunny in Philadelphia now. So check it out. So I actually didn't watch Swan Song either. I started it, and then I never actually got back to it. So I will be watching it this week. So maybe we can review it next week together. But It's Always Sunny. I had I used to watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, like, retroactively. After they had, like, six seasons, I was like, all right. And then I binge watch them. I'm like, oh, fucking, this is great. So then it kind of tailed off for me. Like, after, like, season six or so, it kind of progressively started to go down. They'd have fantastic episodes. But they'd also have some real ones that just missed the mark for me. So I kind of tailed off on that after the last, you know, for the past few seasons. And then I was looking the other day and I was like, oh shit, they got a new season that dropped like the beginning of December and they dropped the whole season. I'm like fucking rad. So I went back because it's like season 15 now, I think. And I watched the first three episodes. I was like, oh shit, they're back. Like it's just, it's back to like season four or five. It's fucking amazing. It's awesome. And, like, their first, the very first episode of this season is what they did in 2020, like a recap. And it was, they all applied for the PPE loan, so it's how they spent all their PPE loans. It was basically everything that was tragic in America, like they had something to do with it. And that's just how they kind of recap it and then get you right back into the new season with season, or uh, episode two. So, I was down on that. Do you watch It's Always Sunny? Oh, I've watched every, I've watched it when it was out, so I watched, I've seen every episode. Even the new show. season? I didn't know they still had new seasons, but up until, I guess, recently. Um, I used to watch, like, on Thursday, it used to be The League, then Always Sunny, bro. That's right. Like, that, that was my The League was my The shit. League was the shit. Mr. McGiblets was the best. <laughs> yeah, but The League, yeah, again, the league. after the first two seasons were amazing, and then it kind of... Tell it off. Yeah. All shows do that, though, but I loved it. But I will say, yeah, so this, the new It's Always Sunny, I saw it was on like Hulu or something. Um, they just, it's a full season of however many 12, 15, whatever episodes is on Hulu. So that's what I was watching. I was cracking up, dude. It's it's right back to being good. Not that it ever wasn't good, but back to the way I like it. Style, anyway. And then I watched uh, Don't Look Up. The Netflix movie with Leo DiCaprio and... Meryl Streep and other people, whatever. Um, it's a new Adam McKay directed movie. It's a doomsday movie, satire. -y. I don't know. It was pretty good. It was long. Um, 
I mean, it was good. It was it was well done. It gets your brain kind of cranking a little bit, and it kind of has some obvious societal jokes in there, stuff like that. It's definitely worth a watch. It was about, I think it was like two hours and 20, two hours 15, which anything over two hours, whatever the and, that's too much for me. Like two hours is yeah, the I'm long of a long movie. Long. Unless it's going to be an epic, like, unless it's Gladiator, which is two and a half hours or something, almost three. Okay. Braveheart, okay. We're not doing a period piece here. We're talking about the world ending. You know? Like, come on, man. Anyway. All right. Well, on that note, since Mike gets to get his ears cleaned out real nice and good. By the way, I think I'm going to go to the East Coast for that. Or when you're out here, we'll get you to a nice bougie, like... We'll take it to Beverly Hills and have them fucking clean out your ears. You're going to be uninspired by this when they do this and not that much comes out, even though I've never done it in my no, life. No, no, no. I, dude, I live, with somebody, I live with somebody where his his old lady back in the day, like, they would burn it out. Like, they put cones in your ear and, like, a candle, and they you burn the candle, and it's supposed to, like, ash up all your earwax. Kind of like... Like a self-cleaning oven. It just heats it up so much that it turns to ash and then you just wipe all that shit out. Same thing with the ear. And like the shit that came out of this guy's ear, I'm like, that's disgusting. So I can't imagine what's in yours. That's going to be awesome. So Should be fun. Considering everything involved, the Spotify playlist of the week is The Boss and Q-Tip. So we got Bruce Springsteen and Q-Tip coming your way. It's one of the baddest fucking playlists we've done. And Bruce Springsteen at the man, just so everyone knows he's doing. And Q tip for obvious reasons. So, on that note, make sure you guys have a good 2022 or wherever the fuck we're about to head into. Go ahead and root for the Cowboys <laughs> this week for Mike because nobody gives a shit anymore. It's pretty much all locked up. I don't up. care about this week. Next week. Root for us next week. Nah, <laughs> nope, nope. One week too late, Mike. That expires uh, on the 13th or whatever. So, All right, on that note, everybody, be good to each other this year. Not just today, this year. Love each other the way that you should. I love you, dude. Love you too, man, and y'all love each other. All right, see you next time. Later.